Lesson 48, the main function. To follow along with this lesson, you will need to create a new console project and add a new file named main.cpp to it, as we did in lesson one. In this lesson, we will explain the functional properties of the main function and its variations. Our original Hello World program looked like this. The main function takes no arguments and returns an int. This program simply returns zero to indicate that the program executed successfully. This version of main is the only one that we have used so far in our C++ console lessons, but at this point we are going to introduce another. The two variations of main in the C++ standard are shown here. The first is the one we used up to this point. The second version takes two arguments and returns an int. The second argument, argv, is an array of char pointers that point to a char array of strings of the type covered in lesson 44. The first argument, argc, is an integer that tells us how many strings were passed in the array argv. We should also mention that you may also see a variant of the main function that takes no arguments and returns nothing. This version is supported by Microsoft's compiler and was used in some of our earlier lessons. However, it is not in the C++ standard and we have discontinued its usage in order to make our console lessons compatible with all compilers. In this program, we introduce the second variant of main. This program simply consists of a loop which runs over each of the strings in the array and outputs it to the console window. This program doesn't do much, but it serves to illustrate how parameters are passed into the main function. If we execute the program as we normally do, by selecting debug, the path and file name of the executable are outputted because this is the default behavior. In this case, the value of argc is 1 and argv is an array of size 1 with the 0th entry pointing to a string containing the path and file name. When we pass arguments to main, the file name will always be the first entry in argv. If we go to the folder where our solution file is and then click on the debug folder to open it, we will see our executable file. My project and solution are named Lesson 48, so that is the name of the executable as well. Our C++ program gets compiled into this .exe file, so if we double click on it, we see our file name and path outputted just as before. Now we want to pass some more strings into the main function, and there are several ways to do this. The first is to use the command prompt. To open the command prompt, left click start, then accessories and command prompt and you should see a window like this. Since the command prompt is already set to the user folder we will work inside there. Open your user folder by left clicking start and then your username. Now we drag our executable into our user folder. Since our command prompt is set to our user folder we can run the executable there without putting in the full path. So we can type lesson48.exe to run the program. However, we want to pass some additional parameters into main, so we will add on the strings argument1 and argument2. When we enter this, the program executes and we see each of the strings outputted to a separate line just as we would expect from our program. In this case, argc equals 3 and argv is an array containing the three strings. This is one way to pass strings into our main function. Another method is to create a shortcut to our .exe file. To do this, right click the file and left click create shortcut in the menu. Once we have the shortcut, we want to change its properties. To do this, right click the shortcut and left click properties to open the properties dialog. In the shortcut tab, you will see a text box next to the word target that contains the full file path of the executable file. Here, we can add whatever parameters we like after the file name. In this case, I have added three strings after the file name. Now if I left click the apply button and then the OK button, I have changed the parameters that will be sent to main. Double clicking the shortcut, we see all four parameters outputted. Finally, we want to show one more way to pass parameters to main, and that is through the IDE. This method is the most convenient way when we are programming. At this point, we don't need our executable and shortcut anymore, so we delete them and go back to the IDE. Now, we left click project in the menu bar and lesson 48 properties in the sub menu. This brings up the properties dialog for our project. Here we left click configuration properties and then debugging. On the right, in the command arguments box, 
we can add strings that will get passed to the main function. So, if we add these arguments and left click apply and OK, then run our program, we see our path and file name outputted, followed by the arguments that we just added. For our third program, we are going to read a text file. To do this, we use Notepad to create the text file in our project folder so that we can access it without using the full path. Next, we put the file name zoax.txt in the command arguments box. Looking at the program, we see that it takes the second argument as a file name and uses it to create and open a file object for reading. Then, this while loop reads each line of text in the file and outputs it to the console window. So if we compile and execute the program, we see the two lines of text outputted to the console window. Now this program can fail for several reasons, the most obvious being the lack of a file name or a missing or misnamed file. So if we were planning to use this program on a regular basis, we would want to add in a test to determine that a file name was passed in and then test that the file was properly opened. This first test checks that two arguments were passed in and the second test checks that the file stream is good. If either fails, we output a message and return 1. Generally speaking, we return a non-zero value to indicate an error in execution and zero to indicate success. How these values are used is a subject that we will take up elsewhere. This concludes the lesson.